these two activities that are so similar and so hard to combine, so all-consuming, so inclusive, so demanding of everything. Uh, one of the problems that we have in a human life is that as we grow older, a carapace of compromise and routine begins to form around each of us, a mummy. And inside this mummy of life half-lived, we begin to die. If life is the supreme good, and if the orientation to the future has to be combined with the enhancement of vitality and of capacity right now in the present moment, then we have to find a way to break this mummy. Now, we cannot break the mummy simply by an act of will. We have to have our protections taken away from us so that we will not begin to die within this rigidified version of the self that is our own character. For me, this effort at engagement in public life, so full of defeats and disappointments, has been, among other things, a way of breaking out of the mummy. Here in this little paradise at Harvard, I am in complete control of my tiny world, wearing involuntarily a coat of armor that nothing can pierce. But in that big seething cauldron of life that is Brazil, my coat of armor is taken off forcibly and I then become subject to the setbacks, to the failures, to the ridiculous situations that make it possible to dissolve the mummy. That's what I want for myself. And that's what I want for everyone. A form of life that would make it possible to die only once. A common theme in these remarks about philosophy and about politics is the incomparable value of life, of vitality, inseparable from the dialectic between engagement and transcendence, and therefore inseparable from the orientation to the future. Living for the future should be a way of living in the present as a being not completely determined by one's circumstances. And what is vitality? In one sense, vitality is the overthrow of the script, the script imposed by the society or by the culture that one is in that tells you 
live this way, think this way, feel this way. But also the script imposed by one's own character, that crystallized form of one's own self, the mummy within which we die. Life is preserved and maintained by throwing the script out. But in another sense, vitality is spontaneity. Santayana once said the following of William James. He was so extremely natural that there was no way of knowing what his nature was or what came next. I have asked myself, what set of social arrangements and moral beliefs would best allow us to live in this way and to acquire, if not an eternal life, at least a greater life? The ideal of vitality goes in the direction of the project of the struggle with the world. The effort to increase our share in the attributes that we ascribe to the divine. And there is a bridge. There is a bridge between the point of departure in the devotion to vitality and this ideal of broadening our share in the attributes of divinity. The bridge is the exercise of our prophetic powers as the common calling of humanity. We are all prophets in waiting even when we stoop to sing in our chains. 